Well, hello again. In this example, you will learn how to sketch and compute the loads acting on beams and columns located within a building. We'll take a look at this framing plan. This one happens to be for a roof system. And we're being told that this is behaving with one-way actions. Specifically, for a dead load of 40 pounds per square foot acting over the entire roof, we're being asked to come up with the load diagrams for beam B1. So you'll notice that's a very typical beam located within the framing plan. And also girder G1, which is located right here. And then also the column that's located on grid line B3. Before we can actually get the loads, we need to make sure we understand what our framing system is doing. So just a quick recollection is the load path for vertical load is the load is applied to the slab. The slab then distributes to the beams. The beams then rest on the girders, and the girders then transfer their loads to the columns. So that's the generic load path that we're going to be dealing with. This particular framing plan will notice our base size is 30 feet. And so we want to see what the spacing is on these particular floor beams. So over the 30 feet, we notice we have one, two, three, four, five beams, which produces six spaces. So we say 30 feet divided by six spaces will equal five feet. So we know typical spacing on this will indeed be five feet. Let's take a look at beam B1. I have given you a zoom up of that particular floor plan. And the way we do this is we will define the tributary area of the slab to that particular beam. This is done by drawing dividing lines halfway between the beams. So there's one halfway there, halfway there. This then becomes the tributary area. So the width here will be five feet. So two and a half feet on each side of the beam is what it is going to get. Now look at that shape and you'll notice over the entire length of the beam that it is a uniform tributary width. So that will produce then for us a uniform tributary load. Now we will need to get the magnitude for that, but I do want to take the opportunity right now and indicate what the span length is of that beam. We see from the floor plan that it is indeed 45 feet. The magnitude of the distributed load, W, we take this uniform pressure, the 40 PSF that we were told, multiply it by its tributary width, 5 feet, and that will then give us 200 pounds per linear foot. So we can come down here, say W is 200 PLF. If you run a little bit of statics on that, you could compute the reactions here. So it's as simple as that for the beam. The girder gets just a little bit more complex. And the reason being is because we have to be very clear on the load path in our mind. Remember that in a one-way slab system, the slab does not distribute load to the girder directly. Rather, it distributes to the beam, and then the beam distributes it to the girder. So we have to understand that it comes down in the form of point loads from the beams. So the beams will put point loads on those girders. And if that is the case, we then are looking at a load diagram. So if a girder then spans that entire 30 feet, and we have five beams that are coming down on it. We've got point loads coming down here. And while this can be just a little bit tedious, I, I want to go ahead and denote these dimensions just so that it is clear in your mind what we are looking at. So these point loads are defined at five foot spaces. So really now our task is going to be is to answer what is the magnitude of that point load. 
So if I can identify what the tributary area is to each one of those point loads, then I can compute it very easily by multiplying that by my 40 pounds per square foot. Here's how we're going to get the tributary area to a single point load. I'm going to recall in my own mind that for any one of these beams, if we wanted the tributary area to a beam, we would draw a dividing line halfway through. But we recognize that the beam is being supported by a girder on each end, so this then would be the tributary area that would end up going to girder G1. Now girder G1 is supporting two beams, in other words one from each side, so half of that is then coming in here. And we recognize this still as five feet. And if you want to, you can go ahead and consider this as 22 and a half feet, but it's probably a bit more convenient to look at that total tributary width, which is 45 feet. So we can get this tributary area, a sub t, is 45 feet multiplied by the 5 foot tributary width, and that will be equal to 225 square feet. And so each of those individual point loads is computed as 40 pounds per square foot multiplied by 225 square feet and that will compute out to be 9,000 pounds or 9 kips and I will go ahead and write that on here. Now the last thing we are being asked for is we're being asked to compute the load that acts on column B3. So that is here. And what we will do is we will look at these column lines. There's column lines 2, 3, and 4, and this particular column A, B, C. We will draw dividing lines halfway through those. And the tributary area for that particular column is the area that's bounded by those dividing lines that we had there before. So what are the dimensions on this? Well, it's 22 and a half feet on each side, so that totals out to be 45 feet. And then likewise here, the dimension there is 15 feet on each side, which works out to be 30 feet. So let's go ahead and get that tributary area computed. 45 feet, 30 feet, and that'll be 1,350 square feet. So the load, the dead load coming down on this column is computed as A sub T times the 40 PSF. That's our 1,350 square feet multiplied by 40 PSF. And that'll give us 54,000 pounds, or in other words, 54 kips. That concludes this particular example, and as always, it's a beautiful day for studying structures.